Welcome movie enthusiasts to Movie Logic Explained, your ultimate destination for unraveling the mysteries, hidden meanings, and fascinating details behind your favorite films. So grab your popcorn, subscribe, and let's dive into the captivating universe of Movie Logic Explained together. Let the movie magic begin. Beauty and the Beast 2017 explained at the beginning of the film, a prince is introduced who has constructed his palace in a magnificent manner. Within his palace, he used to organize grand balls for the enchanting young ladies. However, one night, a storm suddenly arises. Seeking shelter from the storm, an elderly woman makes her way to the prince's castle. Despite her age and lack of charm, she presents a rose to the prince as a gesture of honor. Unfortunately, the prince, perceiving her as unattractive and aged, ridicules and mocks her. In an act of humiliation, he throws the rose given by the elderly lady. The elderly lady then imparts a valuable lesson to the prince, emphasizing that physical beauty holds little significance compared to the beauty found within a person's heart. However, the prince remains unwilling to acknowledge her words. Astonishingly, the elderly lady transforms into a charming young girl before his eyes. It is revealed that the old lady was, in fact, a witch who had disguised herself to test the prince's character. The witch discerns that the prince lacks the capacity for love in his heart and subsequently curses him, transforming him into a beast. Desperately pleading with the witch to reconsider, the prince's pleas fall on deaf ears. As a result of a curse, everyone begins to forget about the prince. It is then revealed that the rose given by the witch was not an ordinary flower, but an enchanted one. The witch cursed the prince for refusing her rose and the curse can only be broken if the prince falls in love with someone before the last petal of the rose falls. Likewise, that person must also reciprocate the prince's love. If no one falls in love with the prince before the last petal falls, he will forever remain a beast, unable to regain his human form. Many years pass, and the palace remains devoid of visitors. However, in a nearby town, a young girl named Belle emerges. Belle possesses a deep love for reading, and her father works as a designer. Additionally, there is a young man named Gaston in the town who desires to marry Belle. However, Belle refuses his advances due to his arrogant nature. Gaston made every effort to persuade Belle to marry him, but all his attempts were in vain. One day, Belle's father had to travel through a forest on his way to a certain place. As he passed through, he noticed that the path ahead was engulfed in flames. He quickly changed direction to find another way. Riding on his horse, Bill's father suddenly heard the howling of wolves coming from the forest. The wolves began to chase him, and he urged his horse to gallop faster to save himself. As he rode, he came across a castle nearby. Bill's father entered the castle, hoping to find help. To his surprise, he found the table set with a meal and candles lit. Hungry, he started eating, but the most astonishing thing happened. The teacup on the table started talking to Bill's father. Thinking it was a ghost trying to scare him, Belle's father boldly declared that he was not afraid and ran away. This raises the question, how did the teacup speak? The truth is that all the household objects in the castle were once human beings who had been transformed by a curse from a witch. Belle's father hurried to the garden, where he saw beautiful flowers blooming. Believing that his daughter had asked for a flower, he picked one. Suddenly, the beast appeared and accused him of stealing the flower. Belle's father's horse galloped away, eventually reaching Belle at their house. When Belle saw that the horse was alone and her father had not returned, she quickly realized that he was in trouble. In order to find her father, Belle rides the horse and searches for him. The horse leads her to the castle where her father is imprisoned. Upon entering the castle, Belle discovers that there is no one there, and despite calling out multiple times, she receives no response. Although she can hear sounds, she cannot see anyone. Eventually, Belle reaches the place where her father is being held captive. Her father warns her that the entire castle is alive and urges her to run away before being seen. He explains that he was imprisoned for plucking a flower for Belle, and that the beast is responsible for his punishment. However, before Belle can leave, the beast appears. Belle is frightened by his terrifying appearance, but she tries not to show her fear. She insists on meeting her father, but the beast refuses to let her. Belle accuses the beast of being cruel for punishing her father so severely for a small mistake. She claims that she was the one who told her father to pluck the flower. Determined to see her father, Belle insists that she will meet him at any cost. The beast warns her that once the door is opened and locked again, 
it will never be unlocked. Despite the warning, the beast unlocks the door, and Belle goes inside to meet her father. However, she quickly pushes her father outside, and locks the door behind her. According to the beast, the door will never be unlocked again. Belle's father was held captive, so she took his place. The beast then released Belle's father, and set him free. However, now Belle herself is imprisoned. In the absence of the beast, a table clock and candle holder move towards Belle. These objects were once human beings, but they have been transformed into a candle holder and table clock due to a curse. Despite this, they can still walk, talk, and hear like humans. They unlock the door and ask Belle to join them. They inform Belle that they will provide her with a separate room to live in. They believe that Belle may be the girl who can break their curse. They assign a room for Belle to reside in. Upon learning about this, the beast becomes angry and scolds the table clock and candle holder. Both objects insist that Belle might be the one who can free them from the curse. They advise the beast to invite Belle for dinner and get closer to her. Upon hearing this, the beast becomes even more aggressive towards them. He questions their sanity, stating that he would never invite the daughter of a thief to dine with him. However, after much insistence from all the objects, the beast reluctantly agrees. The beast approaches Belle and demands that she dine with him. He makes it clear that it is not a request. Belle responds, questioning the beast's sanity. She reminds him that he first imprisoned her father, and then imprisoned her. Now he wants to dine with her. The beast angrily hits the door, and declares that Belle will dine with him no matter what. Belle defiantly states that she would rather die than dine with him. The beast responds, fulfilling her wish by refusing to provide her with any food. He declares that she will die of hunger, and no one will serve her. The hunger will ultimately lead to your demise. Only a few petals remain, and they too will soon fall. Meanwhile, Belle's father returns to his town and desperately informs everyone about his daughter's perilous situation. He explains that she is trapped in a castle nearby the forest, where a beast resides. However, no one believes him and dismisses it as a mere tale. Gaston, who desires to marry Belle, takes the opportunity to impress Belle's father by expressing his trust and willingness to accompany him in rescuing their daughter. Together with one of his companions, Gaston sets off into the forest to find Belle's father's supposed path. However, they are unable to locate the route that Belle's father had taken. Gaston becomes furious and accuses Belle's father of being insane, claiming that the beast does not exist. He also declares his love for Belle and his intention to marry her. Belle's father firmly rejects his proposal, stating that his wish will never be fulfilled. Enraged by this response, Gaston binds Belle's father's hands and feet, leaving him under a tree to die, as the region is infested with wolves, who will eventually devour him. Then a woman named Agathe appears, who had been banished from the castle. Agatha saves Belle's father's life and sets him free. Belle is then shown in the castle, approaching a rose. Just as Belle is about to touch the rose, the bee suddenly appears. He angrily warns her, stating that they could all be killed. Furiously, the beast orders Belle to leave, and she departs while crying. As Belle crosses the forest on her horse, she is surrounded by wolves. However, before the wolves can harm her, the beast arrives and confronts them, driving them away. In the process, the beast gets injured. As Belle is about to leave on her horse, she notices that the beast has fallen to the ground and is badly wounded. Despite her initial intention to leave, Belle decides to stay by his side because he had saved her life. Belle tells him that she cannot carry him, so he must stand on his own. With great effort, the beast manages to stand, displaying his courage. Belle then brings him back to the castle, riding with him on the horse. Belle has returned to the same castle once again, and all the cursed objects in the castle are thrilled to see her. They had hoped for Belle's presence in the castle, as they believed it could break the curse and restore everything to normal. However, they do not disclose the full story to Belle or reveal the remedy to break the curse. They simply inform her that they will remain in their current state until the last petal of the rose falls, and the beast will forever remain a beast. Belle tends to the beast's wounds and recites a verse as she stays close to him. Due to her fondness for stories, poetry, and books, Belle was captivated by the beast's recitation of a verse of poetry. This revelation left Belle astonished, prompting her to inquire if he too had an interest in poetry. In response, the beast admits that while he does not read romantic poetry, he possesses extensive knowledge about it, and has read numerous books. However, Belle expresses her love for romantic poetry and stories. The beast remarks that her outlook indicates her affinity for love-inspired themes, and advises her to read quality literature if she enjoys reading. 
Subsequently, the beast leads Belle to this magnificent library, which houses a vast collection of books. Belle is pleasantly surprised and filled with excitement upon seeing the abundance of books, as she had previously struggled to find reading material in town. The beast kindly offers Belle the opportunity to stay with them, which brings her great joy. Over time, they spend more and more time together, becoming close friends and learning each other's preferences. They share meals together, and the beast even serenades Belle with a song. Additionally, he shows her a spellbook given to him by a witch, explaining that it allows them to travel through different periods of time. Belle expresses her desire to travel back to the moment she last saw her mother, only to discover that her mother had been infected with an illness. Heartbroken, Belle mourns the knowledge she now possesses. They eventually return to the present time, where the candle holder advises the beast to express his love to Belle. However, the beast believes that Belle will never love him. However, the candle holder makes a valiant effort to persuade the beast. All the other household objects also work together to convince the beast. Initially, they convince the beast and later they also prepare Belle for it. Belle has a passion for dancing, so they both decide to dance together. It is revealed that Belle's father has returned to the town. They inform everyone that Gaston has left him bound in the forest, where the wolves may attack him. Agati is also accompanying Belle's father. However, Gaston denies these accusations and refuses to confess. He claims that it is all a lie and that he is possessed by a devil. He also dismisses Agathy's testimony as unimportant, stating that she has already been banished. Gaston's accomplice also lies, supporting Gaston's claims. As a result, all the townsfolk trust Gaston and begin to believe that Belle's father has gone insane and is possessed by a devil. They decide to apprehend him. Meanwhile, at the castle, Beast and Belle continue to dance, enjoying themselves. Beast expresses his feelings to Belle, stating that he has forgotten what it feels like to have affection. Belle reveals that her father taught her how to dance. Beast asks if she misses her father, to which Belle replies affirmatively, expressing how much she misses him. Beast possesses a magic mirror that allows them to see anyone they desire. He shows Belle an image of her father in the mirror, revealing that the townsfolk have imprisoned him and tied him up. Upon witnessing this, Belle becomes worried. Beast tells her that her father needs her and encourages her to go to him. He also gives her the magic mirror, explaining that she can see his ugly face in it if she ever misses him. After Belle departs to rescue her father, the beast is left alone in the castle. He deeply misses Belle as he has fallen in love with her, but she has chosen to leave him. Despite her absence, their curse remains unchanged. This realization causes both the beast and his companions to become worried. Meanwhile, Belle arrives in her town and discovers that her father has been imprisoned by the townsfolk. She informs everyone that her father's words were indeed true. There is a castle nearby in the forest where a beast resides. However, the townsfolk refuse to believe her. In order to prove her claims, she shows them the beast through a magical mirror. The sight of the beast shocks everyone. Belle reassures them that the beast is not a threat and there is no need to fear him. She explains that he is actually kind-hearted and has no desire to harm anyone. Gaston becomes jealous upon hearing this, realizing that Belle has fallen in love with the beast. He attempts to manipulate everyone by claiming that the beast has enchanted Belle and is influencing her words. Gaston suggests imprisoning Belle and her father, further fueling the anger of the townsfolk. He convinces them that they should all go to the castle together and kill the beast before he can harm them or their town. Manipulated by Gaston, the townsfolk become pawns in his plan and head towards the castle. As the townsfolk enter the castle with the intention of ending the beast's life, they are unexpectedly attacked by the beast's enchanted household objects. The townspeople were perplexed by the events unfolding before them as they struggled to comprehend the situation. They were mere objects, devoid of human understanding. Suddenly, Gaston appeared, approaching the beast. However, the beast was overcome with sadness as he was not feeling well after Belle's departure. He longed for her presence. Gaston questioned the beast, asking if he believed that Belle loved him. He revealed that she had sent the townsfolk to kill him. With these words, Gaston fired his gun at the beast, causing him to stumble. Yet, the beast managed to hold onto the balcony railing, preventing himself from falling. Before Gaston could fire again, Belle arrived on the scene. She reached out and grabbed Gaston's hand, stopping him in his tracks. In the midst of their struggle, Gaston lost his footing and fell. His gun slipped from his grasp. The beast, determined to rise above the situation, looked at Belle with renewed courage. He desired to confront Gaston and approach him, gripping his neck. He lifted Gaston off the ground, preparing to throw him from the high wall. Gaston pleaded with the beast, begging him not to let go. In a surprising turn of events, the beast declared, I am not the beast, and spared Gaston's life. 
He commanded him to leave, and Gaston obediently departed. The beast then turned his attention to Bell. However, taking advantage of the moment, Gaston fired his gun at the beast from behind. The beast collapsed, his condition worsening due to his severe injuries. Meanwhile, the ground beneath Gaston cracked, causing him to fall as well. Tragically, Gaston lost his life from the fall. The beast's condition deteriorated further as he struggled with his wounds. He was taking his final breaths. Bell assures the beast, I will never abandon you again. However, the beast replies, My time has come to depart. Bell reassures him, Nothing bad will befall you. Everything will be all right. As the last petal of the rose falls, the beast remains silent. Suddenly, the enchanted household objects lose their animation. Belle is overcome with grief as she witnesses the dying beast. Tears fill her eyes as she professes her love for him. She tells the beast, I have deep affection for you. Drawing closer to the beast, she is joined by Agati, who was previously banished. But the truth is revealed. Agati is the witch herself. She knows that the beast is in love with someone, and that someone is also in love with the beast. This means that the curse has been broken. In an instant, the beast's surroundings become illuminated. Now, the beast transforms into a handsome prince. Belle is filled with excitement as she witnesses the transformation. They both experience joy as they gaze into each other's eyes. Embracing one another, they come closer. All the cost household objects also transform into humans. They have finally regained their true forms. Everyone is overjoyed. Belle and the prince dance with the others in the castle, and thus the movie concludes with a happy ending. Thank you for watching. Enjoying the cinematic journey so far? Don't miss out on the next blockbuster breakdown. Hit that subscribe button and give us a thumbs up if you're loving the content, share it with your fellow cinephiles, and don't forget to ring that bell. Subscribe, like, share, and ring that bell. Let's make every movie moment count together.